Hey there, welcome to Flat Tire Farm. I'm Crystal and today I'm gonna teach you why I can tomatoes without peeling them. Now before I get into how I justify canning tomatoes without taking the skins off, I wanna give you a quick science lesson. I wanna take a second and tell you about the different safety mechanisms in water bath canning and pressure canning. And water bath canning, it's the acidification that makes it safe. It makes it an inhospitable environment for bacteria to grow, which is why your water bath items are considered high acid foods. You're pickling things, you're putting vinegar in it, you're making fruit jams. Those are things you can water bath. Things that are low acid foods like meat and carrots and potatoes, you have to pressure can because the safety mechanism in that is the high temperature over a period of time. Because when you're pressure canning, the temperature reaches 240 degrees, which is a bit above boiling. And that makes all the bacteria in the jar die and can't live, essentially. That's the goal anyways. <laughs> Now canning tomatoes is unique and that there are approved methods for both water bath canning and pressure canning. The approved method for both water bath canning and pressure canning tomatoes, you're supposed to add an acidification unit like lemon juice, citric acid, or vinegar. So that didn't make sense to me. Why am I adding acid in a pressure canned situation? Okay, so here's where my logic comes in. You're supposed to take the skin off the tomatoes because that's where most of the bacteria lives, just like you would take the skin off of carrots and take the skin off of potatoes. Now, potatoes and carrots are both low acid foods. So you pressure can them and you don't add acidity to it because the safety comes in pressurizing the food in the jars and heating the temperature up to 240 degrees, right? Okay, that all makes sense to me. I'm essentially going to trade taking the skin off for adding an acidification agent. So I'm getting double the safety with pressure canning and adding acid. So I'm gonna leave the skins on and I feel comfortable doing that in my house. So let me show you how this goes. Now we live off grid in Alaska and our growing season is really short here. And so all of these tomatoes actually ripened in a box under my kitchen table because <laughs> every year that's how we got to get them to ripen and mature. Now, most people I think take the skins off of their tomatoes and then they can either throw it away, feed it to their chickens, or they have to find a way to preserve it. They dehydrate it and process it down and make stuff out of it. And I think that's really fabulous, um, but I would just rather throw it in the jar and be done with the deal. Um, then process it twice and surely I'm not going to waste it and throw it away. I'll meet you back in a bit after I get all these chopped up. All right, before we lose daylight, I'm going to show you the rest of this. This is the method for raw pack whole or have tomatoes. Um, it's the approved method. Of course, I have the skins and that part is not approved. But you put them in there, you squish them down and the liquid from the tomatoes will come out and continue to fill the jar. And I just squish them. Okay, there we go. Looks like we need at least one more in there. All right, okay, I'll bring this over to you. All right, we're squishing it down. We're getting all the bubbles out. I just use my hands. That's just what's easier for me. Now we're gonna leave a half inch of headspace on these. And the distance between this glass ring that goes all the way around and the rim of the jar is usually about an inch. So we're just gonna go halfway between there and there and that'll be our half an inch. No need to measure or anything. Now remember, I'm gonna pressure can this and I left the skins on, so I'm gonna double duty on the safety and I'm gonna go ahead and add the citric acid, although I still don't think it's necessary. I'm gonna obey and do it. I'm sure you're shocked. For each pint jar, you need a quarter of a teaspoon of citric acid. And I just buy this citric acid in bulk because it's way cheaper than buying it a teeny tiny bit at a time. And I use so much of it. You can add salt if you want. I don't, I'll add it when I cook it and see what it tastes like. So I'm gonna wipe the rim of my jar with a wet paper towel to get all the goop off of there. I'm also gonna feel it and make sure that there's no cracks or anything on there that I might miss and it would wreck my seal and all my food and then I'd be sad. We're gonna take our two-part lid. We're gonna put the rubber seal side down right on the rim of our jar. We're gonna take our ring, twist it on there till it first catches, and then we're gonna turn this ring another eighth of the turn of the jar. And that's finger tight. Now let's get the pressure canner ready. I have about two or three inches of water inside my pressure canner. I haven't turned it on yet because I want everything to heat up at the same time. The water in here is room temperature. These tomatoes are room temperature. I wouldn't want to heat this all up and then throw cold jars in there. That's a really bad idea for jars. Okay, I'm gonna get all these filled up in here. 
We get the lid on. The other really cool thing about canning tomatoes, aside from being able to choose whether you want a water bath can or pressure can, is that you can choose what pressure you can at. So you can can at five pounds of pressure, 10 pounds of pressure, or 15 pounds of pressure. Now remember I live off grid, so that means we haul everything in, and including the propane, which is about $5 a gallon right now, which is what it takes to heat this stove. So I'm gonna can at 15 pounds of pressure because that only takes 15 minutes. I know, shocking, right? So I'm gonna turn this on. Everything's gonna warm up all together. When this starts steaming or venting, I'm gonna let it vent for 10 minutes. That guarantees that everything inside that canner is at the same temperature. Then I'll put my 15 pounds on there like that. Wait till it rattles. When it rattles, I'll set the timer for 15 minutes. Okay, this is what your rocking should sound like. Not crazy, super fast, but gentle. All right, now that this is going, I'm gonna set my timer for 15 minutes. See you back when it beeps. All right, the timer's beeping. We're turning off the heat and we're gonna let this cool down. The daylight is failing us, but our canner has depressurized. It's cooled at least a little bit. Let's see if we can get into it. When you open your lid, you always want to open it away from you. So like this, so all the steam goes that way and not this way. <laughs> These are still really hot. Normally you'd let them cool way more than this, okay? But I do want to show you how we did. There we go. Looks like tomatoes to me. As always, thanks for joining us on Flat Tire Farm. I hope you enjoyed my Why I Leave the Peels on Tomatoes canning video today. Stay tuned for more videos, guys.